We'll cover all the muscles of the human body in 10 minutes. We'll start with the lower limb. Shank muscles. Here's the right leg with the tibia and fibula. The right leg is subdivided into three sections, which we'll call compartments. So we have three compartments, the anterior compartment, the lateral compartment and the posterior compartment, which has a deep plane and a superficial plane. Viewed from above, we have the anterior, lateral and posterior compartment. The anterior compartment contains three muscles. Extensor hallucis longus, involved in extending the big toe. Tibialis anterior, involved in dorsiflexion of the foot. And the extensor digitorum longus, helps extend the toes. In the lateral compartment, there are two muscles, the fibularis brevis and the fibularis longus. Both help maintain the arch of the foot. In the deep posterior compartment, there are four muscles. Flexor hallucis longus, involved in flexing the big toe. Tibialis posterior, involved in inversion of the foot. Flexor digitorum longus, helps flex the toes. The popliteus, located at the back of the knee, is the initial muscle for knee flexion. In the posterior compartment, on the superficial plane, we have the triceps shuri, more commonly known as the calf muscle. Tri equals three, the triceps is made up of three muscle heads, the soleus, deep layer covered by two gastrocnemius muscles, medial and lateral. The triceps shuri is involved in plantar flexion of the foot, and therefore extension of the ankle. Thigh muscles. The thigh extends from the hip to the knee. A single bone, the femur. All around it, a large muscular ensemble divided into three groups in three compartments. The anterior femoral compartment, containing the quadriceps, fascia lata, and sartorius. The medial compartment, containing five muscles, the adductors. And the posterior compartment, contains the hamstrings. Superior view, the anterior compartment, the sartorius. The medial compartment and the posterior compartment. The anterior compartment contains the quadriceps. Quadri equals four. The quadriceps is made up of four muscular heads. Three short heads and one long head, different origins but common endings. From the deepest to the most superficial, we have vastus intermedius, vastus lateralis, vastus medialis, and the rectus femoris. The three short heads, the vastus intermedius, vastus lateralis and vastus medialis, act solely on the knee. The long head, the rectus femoris, is biarticular, it acts on both the knee and the hip. The quadriceps is a knee extensor, with only the rectus femoris acting as a hip flexor. The sartorius is a hip flexor and also participates in hip flexion and external rotation. The tensor fascia lata abducts the hip and rotates the thigh medially. In the medial compartment, there are five adductors, pectineus, adductor brevis, adductor longus, adductor magnus and gracilis. The adductors contract during movements with resistance or fast movements with force. They are involved in hip adduction. In the posterior compartment are the hamstrings. The hamstrings are made up of three muscles. The biceps femoris, which is made up of two muscular heads, one long and one short, the semimembranosus and the semitendinosus. The hamstrings are all involved in knee flexion. They are all involved in hip extension, with the exception of the short head of the biceps femoris. The biceps femoris is also involved in external rotation of the knee, and the semitendinosus and semimembranosus in internal rotation. Hip muscles. There are six inner hip muscles below the gluteal muscles. Quadratus femoris. Obturator externus. Obturator internus. Piriformis. Gemellus superior. Gemellus inferior. These are all deep muscles, they strengthen the hip muscles, they are small and short. They are periarticular muscles, they are found around a joint to reinforce it, they participate in the external rotation of the femur and hip. Then, at hip level, there are three gluteal muscles. From the deepest to the most superficial, we have the gluteus minimus, which is a hip flexor, also accompanies movements of the gluteus medius. The gluteus medius is the main hip abductor and plays a role in stabilizing the pelvis. The gluteus maximus, made up of a deep layer and a superficial layer that inserts onto the fascia lata. 
It is a hip extensor and participates in external rotation of the thigh. And further forward, the tensor fascia lata muscle, a hip flexor. Psoas and trunk muscles. We're going to look at the psoas and three muscles of the trunk, the perineum, the diaphragm, and the intercostal muscles. First, the iliopsoas muscle, which is actually made up of two muscles, the iliacus and the psoas major. The iliopsoas is the main hip flexor. The perineum closes the lower orifice of the pelvis, also known as the pelvic floor. The perineum supports the weight of the viscera, it is useful during micturition and defecation. It contracts during sexual intercourse. Next, the diaphragm. The diaphragm is a deep muscle that separates the rib cage from the abdomen. It plays a major role in breathing, it contracts during inhalation and relaxes during exhalation. The intercostal muscles are located between the ribs, they resist intrathoracic pressure and play a secondary role in breathing. Trunk muscles. On the front of the trunk are the abdominal muscles. The abdominal wall is made up of five abdominal muscles, the quadratus lumborum is the deepest, it stabilizes the trunk, the transverse, it contracts when the abdomen is drawn in, so it plays an important role in respiratory movements. The rectus abdominis, the six-pack, it flexes the trunk. The internal and external obliques. The obliques rotate the trunk and also contract and the trunk is inclined. And on the posterior side, we have the posterior trunk muscles, the multifidus, the longissimus, and the iliocostalus. All these muscles are known as spinal erector muscles, they extend the trunk and contribute to increasing your perceived height. Muscles of the upper limb. The muscles of the upper limb are divided into three groups, the anterior muscles, the posterior muscles, and the lateral muscles. There are four anterior muscles, ten posterior muscles and two lateral muscles. The deep anterior plane comprise three muscles, the serratus anterior, the subclavius and the pectoralis minor. The serratus anterior stabilizes the scapula, it's the boxer's muscle, contracting with every punch. The subclavius, lowers the clavicle and raises the first rib during inspiration. And the pectoralis minor, tilts the scapula forward or lifts the ribs. Anterior muscles, on the superficial plane, we have a single muscle, the pectoralis major. It performs adduction, medial rotation and antipulsion of the arm. Posterior muscles, ten in all. These include the rotator cuff, of which there are four, the levator scapulae muscle, the rhomboid minor, the rhomboid major, the trapezius, the teres major and the latissimus dorsi. The rotator cuff is made up of four muscles, the subscapularis, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and teres minor. They reinforce and stabilize the shoulder joint. The subscapularis is the medial rotator of the humerus, the supraspinatus is the arm adductor, and the infraspinatus and teres minor contribute to lateral rotation of the humerus. Levator scapulae muscle, elevates the scapula, but also participates in head rotation, inclination and extension. The rhomboid minor and rhomboid major are fixators, adductors, and elevators of the scapula. The rhomboids are covered by the trapezius. The trapezius is made up of three fascicles, an upper fascicle, this raises the shoulders, it extends, rotates and tilts the head. A middle fascicle, brings the scapula closer to the spine, and a lower fascicle, lowers the shoulders. This is followed by the teres major and the latissimus dorsi. The teres major and the latissimus dorsi have the same function, medial rotation, adduction and retropulsion of the arm. And finally, two lateral muscles, the deltoid and the coracobrachialis. The deltoid is the most superficial, it is made up of three fascicles, the anterior fascicle, for antipulsion and medial rotation of the arm, the middle fascicle, for abduction of the arm, and the posterior fascicle, for retropulsion and slight lateral rotation of the arm. And the coracobrachialis. The coracobrachialis participates in arm adduction and antipulsion. Arm muscles. The muscles of the upper arm are housed in two compartments, an anterior compartment and a posterior compartment. The anterior compartment contains two muscles, the brachialis, which is monoarticular on the deep plane, and the biceps brachii on the superficial plane, 
it has two heads and is biarticular. These two muscles enable elbow flexion, and the biceps brachii also enables elbow supination. The posterior compartment contains the triceps brachii, it has three heads, the medial head, the lateral head and the long head. The triceps brachii is the main extensor of the arm, so it enables elbow extension. Forearm muscles. The forearm muscles are divided into three compartments, the anterior compartment contains the flexor muscles of the wrist and fingers. The lateral compartment contains the extensor and supinator muscles. And the posterior compartment contains the wrist and finger extensor muscles. Neck muscles. We'll be looking at two neck muscles, the sternocleidomastoid and the scalene. These two muscles enable rotation, extension and tilting of the head.